This is the MMA Diagnosis Podcast. And... Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we are back for MMA Diagnosis episode 14. 14 so, or 15? I think it's 14. So we had a one year... <laughs> I one think it's year, 15, but carry on. Yeah, but one year layoff. Um, so... Um, we're back in a time where the coronavirus is... <laughs> yeah, so MMA Diagnosis episode 14 and the Quarantine Chronicles episode 1. Alright. Um, so basically, I think we should talk about UFC 249. Is it happening or not? You see, too far. Dana said it is happening. Um, but Dana says a lot of things. So he says he pays the fighters good. So I guess <laughs> we can't take his word for anything. Um, obviously, you do not. Fuck. We know that this is our first video. Like, we've done audio yeah, only. Yeah, we've only done audio. So well, we haven't got a spectacular studio yet. So uh, this is it for now. Yeah. Uh, our mission is to get 1K subscribers, guys. Uh, Within the next couple of months, so subscribe to our podcast, like and comment. Yeah, the reason, the uh, yeah, the benefits for us getting one K subscribers, we can actually do live streams and we get live chat as well. So, and we obviously want to um, get better equipment over time, and that's the only way we can do it. So, subscribe, like, and comment on our videos, and comment on what you want to hear about as well uh, regarding MMA and any news and stuff like that. So, uh, back to UFC two four nine. Um, there was a tweet yesterday by, I think it's Brett Alcomoto, or, uh, Dana White said that he's going ahead. Yeah, yeah, he said that he's going ahead. Um, he also said... Uh, he goes, no, he goes, he's found a venue. Yeah, 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 so I was actually just going to discuss that. Um, yeah. he goes, he find a venue, and he goes that it's going to be a closed, um, arena, so I'm guessing there's only going to be the fighters and the corners, and obviously referee and everything. So no audience, no fans. So I'm guessing they're gonna charge about two hundred fifty quid for the pay per <laughs> to make up for the revenue. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna just like. Do you think he's gonna up the pay per view prices? No, because obviously economy right now not good. Well, whoever's self-employed is screwed, so you're not getting paid anyway. In the UK terms, I don't know about America how it works. But UK, we don't get... If you're self-employed, you're going to get, like, universal credit, it's called. You have to apply for that. Um, it's not much, like, £100 a week, max. Yeah, if you look at the corona situation and how it's affected every sport now in the world. So there's no football, no cricket, no anything, so uh, no NBA... Um, so you can't put the prices up There's, that can't happen I don't think uh, he might just keep it the same but well, has he got, what, what revenue is he going to make then just pay per views no audience obviously no gate you don't get no gate so, so what's the he's basically they're going to make a lot of money everybody wants to see the fight trust me on this even the person even the homeless person who can't pay for it will want to see this fight so <laughs> <laughs> because because think about it there's no other sport so how many people will actually w watch it? Do you think? I think loads of people. I think it's gonna be a huge pay per view because so. everybody's bored. It's a three week lockdown in okay. UK from yesterday, Monday, twenty third of March. This is yeah. so we're recording on Tuesday, twenty fourth. But basically, this is the second day of lockdown, the three week lockdown. And by the time April eighteenth comes around, if it's still a lockdown, then I think we're going to have a big big uh, numbers on the pay-per-view even though people want to afford it it's not that it is actually affordable everybody chips in ten dollars each or whatever if yeah. in america for us it's basically it might be free on bt sport yeah uh, unless they do a pay-per-view chart and that's 20 pound that's nothing really if you i mean chip in five pound each if four people can you know watch in the same house well they don't want people going out i forgot about that <laughs> oh yeah you can't even do that actually so, uh, where, um, what's the date for the fight again? April 18th? Yeah, April 18th. So, so um, when the lockdown be finished by then? We don't know yet. But we don't know what's going on right now. So Let's talk about the actual fight. Enough of the... Okay, so how do you see the fight going? The uh, fight. We know from past opponents that Tony Ferguson has literally cut up every fighter that he's fought or bloody them up. So, Khabib might not be, you know, the only one to escape it or something. He might actually get cut up. But I still going, 
because I'm biased anyway, so I'm going to go side with Habib anyway. But um, it's going to be a tough fight. It's 50-50. I can't guess who's going to win. Um, it's close. Do, do you think it'll affect Khabib if he gets caught up mentally, or do you think? No, I don't he's think. his backhand and where he's from and um, that kind of culture, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think you don't see him mentally breaking from that. No, I don't see him <coughs> mentally breaking. I think. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. I think he'll get. It, but it might make him easier to get caught in a, um, not caught, but uh, actually make him more slippery if he gets blah, blah, blah. But um, Tony Ferguson obviously just was really do good. Th- do you think but Tony can dance him? Yeah, that's uh, he can't. Do you think you choke him out? Yeah. Tony's got a chance. Well, Dustin Poirier was close. Well, he wasn't close. Tor- Khabib knew what he was doing. Yeah. He was going to get out. I mean, um, I rewatched his uh, first fight in the UFC recently so against Kamal Sharus yeah and Kamal Sharus tried the guillotine as well and he got out the same way exact same way so and he's improved a lot since then like if you watch that fight yeah. uh, Kamal Sharus actually stuffed a few takedowns but Kamal Sharus is probably the only good wrestler he's fought in the UFC anyways regardless so um, my opinion is Tony Tony has a solid uh, wrestling background college background so um this fight is going to be a lot more uh, of a challenge than people think. Yeah, like, I think people I think understand. Tony can scramble back up and make it a dog fight. Uh, whereas the other fighters, a lot of them had more of a striking or jiu-jitsu background. Their their wrestling wasn't their strength, so um, I don't I don't see them anyways. Uh, I don't see the fight uh, being so one sided. Yeah. To either one. Yeah, it's whoever get whoever can. Uh, implement their game plan and then that's going to turn the tide plus we know that um, Tony Ferguson's um, cardio is one of the best so the last five rounds I think I think it's going to be a decision you think so yeah because he'll last five rounds against more, nearly everyone he's fought he'll, he would be able to go distance if he yeah didn't. he'll definitely go five rounds yeah. we see how Khabib because Khabib get, does does get tired sometimes yeah, he does. Uh, in fights because uh, obviously his style is so grueling going forward and wrestling and he does he does um, I just hope he pace. don't get caught in that guillotine or dos that's the thing yeah I hope he doesn't get caught I think I think he might if he were to do a prediction what would it be actually you know what we'll leave the predictions yeah. for the week before the fight but um, the next uh, since we're talking about lightweight division I was thinking about let's talk about the potential matchup of Justin Gaethje versus Conor McGregor. So, oh, what's yeah. your thoughts on that? How do you see that? Because oh, um, Conor's actually the betting favorite right now. They have done the bookies. So. What's the odds? I don't know. What I don't know the odds, but Conor's the favorite. He's quite a heavy favorite. Yeah. So yeah, let's just check the odds. Um, but well, I'm gonna go with uh, basically. I think Conor, in a way, he's he's a favorite because his stand up is really good. And you see Gaethje in his fights, he doesn't use his wrestling, even now. Even though he's gone better at his stand-up, he uses it more wisely. He doesn't brawl like before. He still don't use his wrestling as much. Like, to at offensive, I mean, wrestling. So, uh, I think uh, Conor's got a good chance. Yeah, because if you look at Gaethje's style as well, um, knockout power-wise, who would you give it to? Like, who would have the most Knockout, I'm not sure. I think I would go with McGregor in terms of precision. So yeah, he's but I'm more about pure power. So pure power. Probably uh, Gaethje, you know. Probably Gaethje in a way, but I don't know. Um, but to be honest, McGregor's left hand would you can consider that powerful as well, then. So it just depends. Yeah, uh, I know, I know. But uh, what what I, what I'm thinking is um, obviously we've got um, Gaethje is more of a brawler, right? He comes forward. Yeah. Connor's a counter striker, so. It falls perfect for Connor. I, I, I think he might place a shot and just finish him. I don't see... Unless Gaethje actually uses his brain for once and wrestles. Yeah. Wrestles him and mixes everything up. Which, I, like I said, he never... Every fight, he does not use it. He's got a Division 1 wrestling back. I've been wrestling since he was, like, what, five years old or something. And he never uses it. But like you said, he uses it for defensive now for some reason. Maybe yeah, he doesn't want to get like you know, like you said, get is it more tired. Of a, is it more of an ego thing? I think it's the no, ego man. Thing it's because he doesn't want to get tired from just wrestling, and he enjoys. I think, you know, like you said, once the wrestlers get the punching, like they get knockouts or anything, they enjoy the rather. Yeah, it's wrestle. more of an ego thing. He said it himself. He likes to stand and bang with people, and uh, I don't think ego is. F- 
not ego is fun, not, not in, more enjoyable getting the knockout rather than wrestle someone. Yeah, but that's why Woodley as well. Even he was saying like you, you know, when you get that overhand right and you drop someone, it's more fulfilling like finish rather than taking them down and just like hugging. <laughs> yeah, but well, he should use it because he should use it because if he doesn't use it, then. Um, He's just gonna keep on. He's gonna keep on coming second to top strikers like guys like Connor. I think. I think once he, I think once he fights Connor, he goes. He's only got three fights left anyway. So I'm guessing he's hoping to get Connor and then. Um, Do you think Khabib, after if Khabib. he does beat Connor, he get Khabib next trailer? Khabib. Yeah. Um Because that's gonna be uh, pre. Yeah, say, yeah, dicey. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then you got Ali Abdul Aziz. Who's he gonna go with? Gaethje or? Uh, Khabib, but Ali's, he's gonna, uh, Ali's always professional though, so he he'll be neutral for that fight. He's not gonna get involved in the politics for that fight. So, Dominance MMA is actually killing it. They had that press conference. I uh, since we're talking about Dominance MMA, let's talk about. Uh, did you watch the video where they were discussing about what's better, judo, judo wrestling? Oh yeah, yeah, Khabib and uh, um, Henry, the cringy, cringe guy, Sudo. Uh, That's Kayla Harrison as well, wasn't it? PFL. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know it's interesting. Khabib goes judo because judo is more prestigious, right? Apparently, there's a lot more competitors in judo Olympics than there is for Free wrestling, wrestling Olympics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know, man. Which one? I feel like wrestling's probably more. Yeah, I think so as well. I think he means the prestige, like you said, isn't it? The yeah. class, you know, the class like of winning a, a judo Olympic yeah. gold medal. Yeah, because Kayla Harrison's won two. Yeah, and uh, Kayla Harrison goes to Henry because they're saying Henry's the best combat sports athlete right now. Because think about it, he's won a gold medal in freestyle wrestling. He's um, he's a two division UFC champion as well, which is really hard to do. Uh, Kayla Harrison's already won two judo Olympic gold medals, yeah. and she's the PFL champion. So yeah. she said, "If I win the UFC belt, now am I the greatest ever combat athlete?" I would say so, uh, accolades wise. So um, uh, yeah, that was that was actually a really discussion, uh, interesting discussion. So, uh, if you actually want to see that video, it's on an actual fighter. So, um, he does really good work. So, all right. Uh, let's talk about UFC London then, getting cancelled. So, yeah, I think everybody got it. Uh, yeah, I was uh, really looking forward to it. Obviously, yeah. we couldn't get tickets to it because they always they run out. They sell out. Because like, like, you know, that's the only big UFC in, in the in UK, yeah. Um, that is the only actually event you. You know, it was annoying. I think that was uh, Leon Edwards' breakthrough fight. Yeah, it's that's just, his time to shine. Like, uh, yeah, to see if he can beat a former champion like Woodley. So, I mean, he's already beat a former champion RDA, but a proper welterweight uh, yeah. like Woodley. If he had beaten him, there'd be no questions for a uh, title shot because his last loss was to the is to the current champion Kumar Usman, and that was actually. He lost by decision 29-28. So yeah, that was a close fight. Well, what is a close fight? But I would say no. Like, I mean, as in like he was twenty nine twenty eight. It wasn't like a mauling or a, a brutal beatdown or anything. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. They both improved a lot since then. So it would be nice to see that. Um, I'm a bit annoyed because there was quite a, f- a few um, good no, fights. No, no, no. But like, let's go to the main uh, event. The main event. The right? the way they built up Leon Edwards. That mm. BT Sport advert. If you haven't still watched that, they promoted him properly. You know, like yeah. how they promoted down to They should have done that for him. Yeah, ago. they should have done that for him a long time ago. So maybe because obviously he's not as eloquent as other fighters, he can't speak as well. But uh, they should have promoted him like ages ago. That was an awesome advert. Then if the fight actually happened personally, I think Leon Edwards was, was clo- would have won. He would have won that fight. He was after it. He didn't obviously go to America because why? Because you can't fly to America and then... Well, apparently he, the UFC's demand was three hours. They want, they go to him. Yeah. He woke up. He goes, um, it was Sunday. He woke up the next day and at 9 a.m. he got a call. And then they told him, you got to hit America in three hours. Like yeah, and not history. even that. We They don't know where the venue would have been. And they also didn't know if he would be able to go back after the fight. Yeah, because of the travel. Yeah. there's a travel ban, right? Yeah, travel ban restrictions, coronavirus, everything like that. So that would have came into effect. So why should he risk? No, no. and they weren't. They weren't going. Somebody told me um, they weren't going to pay for his um, 
uh, camp. Like, you know, Cornham and all that stuff, they weren't going to pay for it. Really? Yeah. So, but basically, I think he, for him, it would have been too risky. There's no point. Woodley should have come here because all the British fighters were going to fight on it anyway. Yeah, but then... But obviously now with the band anyway, they wouldn't have come. They wouldn't have fought. So. Yeah, so if uh, he goes that, he goes, uh, give me two or three days. They didn't. They go, no, not even two or three days. Yeah, but you, you have to come in three hours. Yeah, you have to consider it. You can't just... You have to speak over with your family. Oh, now I'll be back. And it's uh, quite a risk. Um, yeah, it's actually really quite risky. So if you... If you look at... Would do you think Leon would have won? How how do you how would you have seen that fight going if it were to if it were to happen? Um, the fight I would have. Yeah, I think I, he would have won. It might have been decision. It would be hard to for him to finish Woodley. Yeah, it's hard uh, to finish yeah. Woodley. Anyways, I think yeah, even Kamaru could have finished him, and Kamaru supposedly like destroyed him apparently, but he couldn't finish him though in the fight. Yeah, I, like. And personally, I think Woodley in that fight, he did look no way. I don't know. Maybe because Kamal was really on. I feel like, game. I don't know. I feel like Woodley sometimes he has a mental block. So, yeah, I if think Leon had, if Leon had like started like strike, like punching him up and being really technical, I think it would have put him off. It would have actually given him a mental block. Or he may have came, he may have come really, like, you know, when he's hungry and motivated. Yeah, aggressive. Yeah. And it might have been a really difficult fight for Leon. So, so we see how that. Um, Hopefully we see that fight in the future getting rescheduled. But they go that um, Woodley goes that he wants to fight Covington next. Oh my god! Yeah, no, yeah. that that was that was actually really annoying because I'm like, you got a fight with um, Leon now. Just stick to that fight. Why are you switching off? Yeah, you don't need to. Yeah, I don't like. Uh, I don't get why he would do that. He doesn't um, want to fight. Him, maybe. You think so? Yeah. Is it because of recognition or is it because of... Uh, do you think the Kobe fight makes more money for him? Yeah, I think Kobe fight makes more money. You get more eyes on the pay-per-view if they do pay-per-view for it. Mm. But it's Kamaru Usman and Thingy next, right? Uh, is, it Ma- is that confirmed? Usman uh, and Masvidal? No, it's not confirmed, but yeah. let's talk about that then. So, Usman versus Masvidal. How would you see that fight then? Usman versus Masvidal. I think it's... Uh, it's going to be a tough fight for Masvidal. Yeah, I think so too. The wrestling, you can say what you want, but once you're in the cage, he knows that wrestling is going to be really deadly for him. If he can't somehow, you know, f- uh, implement his game plan with the stand-up and all that, his takedown events might be good, but I still don't think it's good enough. He's had problems uh, with wrestlers yeah. in the past. so. I think, I think, I think Kamaru Usman is really good. But I think if if Masvidal can stop a couple takedowns and get up at least, striking wise, he's miles ahead. Yeah. So you know how uh, they go that Kamaru Usman's wrestling is so good. Masvidal's striking is that much better than so yeah. it might actually counteract if when they get them little exchanges on the stand up, Masvidal's gonna if I Kobe mean, could tag him. No, yeah. no disrespect to Kobe, he's a great fighter. But if Kobe can tag him. Masvidal's oh, gonna yeah. piece him he's up. He's gonna catch him. Yeah, he's gonna hit him. Keep on, you know. He's gonna keep on boxing his face. Honestly, like um, I remember when we were talking about the till fight, me and my mate, we were on the WhatsApp, and I go, Masvidal's gonna catch him. Just wait, because remember till dropped him. Yeah. Masvidal got up. Oh, don't worry. Masvidal's boxing him up, and then ba- Masvidal did that knockout, and then I was like, See, I told you, there's levels to it. Masvidal's like probably the one of the best. Technical boxes in all of MMA, so yeah, so that fight's gonna be a good. That that actually that get high pay per view. Do you think it'd be high pay per view though? Nah, it would be. Yeah, uh, because he's become the uh, Masvidal since the the BMF title. He's become much bigger. In name term, right, in bigger especially name, after yeah. the Ben Askren knockout and yeah. all that. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Because I remember when Abe Kawa came. Um, when John Jones came to Birmingham and then Abe Kawa came and we were speaking to Abe Kawa Abe Kawa is the uh, Hoy Mazda's manager and John Jones manager uh, he goes that uh, they wanted to obviously bring in Birmingham I go are you going to come Birmingham so they want to bring in Birmingham but I don't know if he's coming UK now because then him and Leon had the situation yeah the scrap. so um, they wanted to do that but I'm guessing because Mazda got, got the opportunity to fight Nate Diaz 
now he's not looking at that. The only way Leon can fight him now is if Masvidal, I'm guessing, wins the belt. Yeah. And then Leon beats Woodley, then I can see that fight happening. That would be that would be a good pay per view fight. He's got a lot of promo yeah. in there as well, a lot of actual beef. All right. So what's next? Okay, let's talk about some. Uh, let's talk about some fun matchups now. Okay. The current Belto middleweight champion is Gegard Musasi. Yeah, right? Gegard Musasi. Yeah. And obviously, the current UFC middleweight champion is Israel Adesanya. Who do you, who would you, who, who could you see uh, winning that fight? Oh So wow. they were to fight. Yeah, cross promotion. I think um, Gegard Musasi is one of the best. So, mm. and Israel Adesanya is just coming up as well. Like he's got a lot of experience, obviously, on stand up and that, but. Uh, Musashi's experience in MMA is much vast. Like, I still go with Israel Adesanya because youth. He's got youth on his side compared to. Well, Musashi. not really. The yeah. similar age. Are they? Yeah, let me check. No. They are similar. Age. Adesanya is about thirty. Adesanya is about then, thirty, thirty-one. Yeah. Musashi is only about thirty-two, thirty-three. I'm sure. Uh, I think it was thirty-four, thirty-five. But still, uh, okay. Still Adesanya like- looks more youthful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he obviously he can um, his stand up's awesome just like Tubanis Masasi has got a good stand up yeah Masasi's yeah. from uh, Netherlands uh, yeah. they've got top kickboxing there so do you think the ground game and stuff like that would come into play or the Adesanya would just just keep it off the ground he wouldn't want to I think he would anyway. keep it off the ground yeah. to be honest but if you look at it Masasi's ground game would be better I think anyways yeah. like he'd be more technical right um I don't know that, that that fight is. Let me just check. I Gegard's think they age. should try to do cross promotion fights anyway because yeah, Gegard's thirty four. Yeah, he's gonna be thirty five. Yeah, so. um, cross promotion fights would be awesome because like then you can see who's the real best in the world. Obviously, we know that UFC has does have most of the best fighters. I personally think it's harder to get into as well. And when you're in there, people even uh, Will Brooks that came from Belto. He was really yeah, good Yeah, he fighter. was like a killer in Bellator and then in and UFC. Then, as soon as he came into UFC, he just flopped it. I don't know what happened, but could be mentally or maybe going through some stuff as well at the time, don't know. Yeah. Um, I, okay, if you had to give me a list of guys that could potentially beat Habib, who would you give? There's nobody. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody. There is nobody. No, only Ferguson, I think. Like, I don't see the other guys being him. I, even, I don't even see Gaethje. I don't even see Gaethje being him. You don't think AJ beats him? No. Like, but has a chance. Yeah, he has a chance. But, like, you but can say everyone says, but I mean like, yeah. when I say chance, I mean like... What I mean by Tony Ferguson is 50 feet. Um, we do not... like Nobody, literally nobody knows who's going to win that fight. That's why it's so exciting. I want it to happen now because... I know it's selfish, right? Because of this corona thing. and uh, But I feel like Tony's getting older now. Yeah. So we want to see now. Now's the time. Like, yeah, I think everybody's sick and tired. They don't want to wait another year or even like six months for it to happen. It's just too yeah, long. Yeah, I think now is the time. So Dana's saying it's going to happen. Where, where do you think the venue is going to be? Is it going to be America or do you think... Where, I'm thinking it Middle East. It can't be America. Because on, on that note, Khabib gone back home to Russia. Has he confirmed? He said yeah, he was yeah, going to pack yeah, his Yeah, he's bags. going back to Russia. So he's going to back to Russia. So it might be in Russia. I don't know. Is it in Russia? <laughs> or somewhere near there maybe. Like I thought East it might be Middle East because yeah. location's good, probably the weather yeah. as well. Is there a lot of corona cases? And plus, there? I don't think, obviously, they're trying to skirt around, uh, what's it called, commissions and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, legislation. And you know, so that's you know, why you, they're going you know to. You know, the sheikhs and the Arabs. Yeah, that, the, yeah, but that's why they're trying to go to Middle East because of legislation and stuff like that. They might be able to get the venue done at least with no spectators, but. They'll be able yeah, because you know my uh, I was talking to one of my mates, and he 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 had a funny idea because DC actually said the same idea on the Ariel Hawani show about the private jet. They yeah. they could use the private jet. Right? My mate said that to me a week ago. He was like, "Why can't they use a private jet to bring Leon to uh, yeah uh, like America?" But obviously, uh, maybe they don't think he's big enough for to work. Yeah, but then Kobe and Ferguson is definitely big enough, yeah. more than big enough. So. Uh, I think that Shall we? they should yeah. use that. What was it? You wanna? What yeah. else? Have we got anything left? Because got any closing, closing sports. Sp- sports, obviously, you know, no football. There's nothing. There's literally I nothing. Said thoughts. To watch. Oh, but thoughts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, thoughts. Uh, 
I don't have any right now. But um, yeah. so this is our uh, uh, the first Corona one to the at least the coronavirus. Uh, it has made us, you know, um, it's pushed us to do the videos because I think the audio was good, but we're trying to get the membership of subscribers. So if you want yeah. more videos, subscribe, like, comment the videos. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Just follow us at MMA Diagnosis on YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. If you want to see more content, subscribe, like and comment on the videos.